In the gripping books of kings, the northern kingdom of Israel is painted with a dark brush. The picture painted is a legacy marred by violence, greed, and idolatry, personified in Jeroboam and his notorious followers known as the Umrites. The Bible accuses the most famous Umarite couple, King Ahab and his notorious wife, Jezebel, the Phoenician princess, of repeatedly committing some of the greatest biblical sins, introducing the cult of foreign gods into the land of the northern kingdom of Israel, murdering faithful priests and prophets of yud heh unjustly confiscating the property of their subjects, and violating Israel's sacred traditions with arrogant impunity. The biblical story of the Omrites painted them as notorious villains. Yet, recent archaeological findings bring to light a captivating new narrative about this powerful royal dynasty. Indeed, had the biblical authors and editors been historians in the modern sense, they might have said that Ahab was a mighty king, a visionary leader, who managed to propel the northern kingdom of Israel into international prominence through his marriage with the daughter of Phoenician king Ether Baal, a brilliant stroke of international diplomacy, and by building beautiful cities that acted as administrational hubs for their flourishing country. A truly remarkable accomplishment. They would have said how Ahab and his father Omri were renowned for creating one of the most formidable armies in their region, allowing them to expand their empire deep into northern regions in the Transjordan. Of course, Omri and Ahab's rule may not have been without fault, but their actions weren't too far off the mark among other monarchs in ancient Near Eastern times. Their capriciousness and brutality oftentimes mirrored that of their contemporaries. The northern kingdom of Israel's ambitions for a powerful kingdom propelled them towards greatness. Through their unique organizational structures, they established an impressive professional army and bureaucracy while creating sophisticated settlement systems of cities, towns, and villages, laying the foundation for an enduring northern Israelite kingdom. This powerful dynasty so dominated their region that they achieved an unprecedented feat, placing one of their own princesses on Judah's throne. The Bible's negative characterization of the Omri dynasty has effectively cast a shadow over its remarkable character, goals, and achievements. This condemnation serves as proof for Southern Davidic dynasties' claim about their own supremacy by demeaning and misrepresenting nearly everything related to the Northern Kingdom. By the time Israel had been decimated and much of its population forcibly relocated, the Southern Kingdom of Judah saw a unique opportunity to thrive. They claimed what was lost of their fallen neighbors, asserting themselves as the rightful legacy bearers of ancient lands and identity. Are those claiming Judah really accusing someone of taking their place or assuming their spot? I guess the conversation just got interesting. The biblical authors have misrepresented us, the Northern Kingdom, for too long. It's time we set the record straight. And we're going to do just that. Because we 
on and on.